Welcome to UNAM Chicago's Cafe Expresso, a space for bilateral conversations with people from all walks of life. Tune in to Spanish Public Radio and follow us on social media. And now your host, Alberto Fonserrata. Welcome, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Cafe Expresso. My name is Alberto Fonserrada, and I'm your host. This program comes from UNAM Chicago in alliance with Spanish Public Radio. Um, I'm having a, my early morning espresso. Today is a special day. Um, we're going to be talking about a phenomenon that it happens every 17 years. Uh, stay tuned because this is very exciting. Uh, with me, we have a, a colleague from UNAM, and uh, please let me introduce uh, Mariana Barca. Hello, Mariana, how are you? Hello, I'm very happy to be here. I love infant gossip. This is, this is excellent. This is, this is amazing to have you. Uh, Mariana, Mariana Barca, she's a biologist uh, from uh, George Washington University, a PhD. Yeah, so I got my PhD at George Washington University, and my master's and undergrad degrees at UNAM. Okay, proud UNAM. So you've been living in DC for, for quite a bit. Yes, for since 2010. Oh, okay. And what, okay, first of all, what got you into this uh, topic of insects? Of insects, okay. Um, I started out as a plant ecologist, actually. I was fascinated by the a variety of, of mating systems that plants have. And then I realized that what makes plants interesting are insects. So insects eat the plants and then plants defend from them with um, chemicals like caffeine that we're enjoying right now. And I just like that interaction. And so I decided to study, yes, plant-insect interactions, but from the insect side. Okay, very interesting. Well, as you can see from my, from my background here, uh, everybody and who, those who, are not, uh, who cannot see me uh, and are just tuning in on Spanish public radio, I have a background with a bunch of cicadas on my back. Uh, so this is a topic we're going to be talking about. So, Mariana... What's happening every 17 years? When, when will these uh, insects, millions of insects, start emerging from the earth? Yeah, so it's, it's very exciting. And I'm particularly excited this year about it because I got here in 2010 and I didn't think I would be here long enough to see them. So they come out every 17 years um, and they come out in millions, millions of them at the same time. Um, Periodical cicadas are different from, from annual cicadas. So I think, I think you've noticed we have some cicadas coming out every year, right? But periodical cicadas, they, uh, they don't do that. They come out every 17 years or every 13 years that we know here in the, in the US. There are other periodical cicadas in Fiji that come out every eight years and others in India every four years. And those are the only periodicals that we know of. So they spend most of their life underground feeding on root sap. And that might be one of the reasons why they have this long life cycle. It's pretty long for an insect. Um, sap is not very nutritious. So sap is the, the fluid of trees, like, oh, okay. of like the... Um, blood of trees, I guess you could say. So it's this, the, the... Is it the savilla in Spanish? Savia. Oh, savia, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So they feed on that, they drink it. They have these special mouth parts uh, that are, are like, a, like a straw, their rostrum. And then they pierce roots with that and they suck the, the plant's fluids. Oh. And those plant's fluids have mostly water and sugar, but not a lot of protein. So they get their nutrients from, from symbionts that they have in their, in their guts, from bacteria. That's where they get their, their uh, protein. So it takes a while to develop on such a poor um, um, nutrient uh, resource. And also they're pretty clumsy <laughs> and they're not very good at flying. So they're easy prey. And they have a particular defense that's overwhelming their predators. So if a lot of cicadas come out, 
at the same time. It's impossible to eat them all. So that's why um, it's to their advantage to synchronize their, their emergence from Earth and come at the same time. Mm, also, if they only come every 17 years or 13 years, it's not really worth it as a predator to specialize on feeding on them because you would be dining like <laughs> every 17 years. Right, right exactly. <laughs> yeah, so those are uh, two reasons they might have this, this particular life cycle. Interesting. Now, uh, why do they make so much noise? What's what's the deal oh, with the? Uh, I mean, I, I imagine it's going to be brutal in, in in a few weeks, right? Because they're emerging in, in in a few weeks. They're not here yet. Well, we said a few weeks. Uh, we were uh, expecting them the third week of May. Okay. Uh, but it's actually it has to do with the temperature of the soil. Once the soil gets to eighteen Celsius, we think in Celsius or uh, Fahrenheit is sixty four. Uh, that's when they come out. They dig their emergence holes and then they hang out there for a little bit before coming out. And we're already seeing these emergence uh, holes. Then they will come out. Um, we said the third week of May, they may come out a bit earlier than that. And they, they want to mate. And so it's the males that make that loud sound. It can mm -hmm. be as loud as a motorcycle. So it's it can be annoying, or if you're very close to a chorus that's a big group of males, it can even be dangerous if you're there for, for um, hours and hours because it can damage your, your ears. Oh, wow. That, like, that's... A, like a motorcycle. Like, it's okay if a motorcycle goes by, but you're right. not. Right. <laughs> you're not sitting right in front of it. Yeah. That's incredible because I, I, I mean, whenever I hear cicadas, I just, you know, my mind goes to a uh, to the to the to the countryside and it's just like it's a very nostalgic it brings me kind of like to childhood you know it's uh it's a, it's a lovely sound but i guess with millions of them we're, we're in for a surprise uh yeah 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 for That's sure um, so this is this is in, in just in the northeastern part of the united states that we're going to witness this this phenomenon yes okay yes um it's about 15 states in the eastern side and there's an app, Cicada Safari, where um, people can document if they see them. Just download the app, take pictures of them, and then we'll have much better maps of where they actually emerged this oh, year. Oh, cool. Oh, but we were talking about the, the males singing. Yeah. So the males have these special organs that are called timbals, timbalos in Spanish. And these are membranes that they vibrate, and they can vibrate them like 300 to 400 times per second, so super fast. And their abdomens are mostly hollow. So it's like, like squeezing a water bottle, um, those that you purchase and like you empty it and then you squeeze it. Right. So, so if, you, if you could do that like super fast, it's kind of, that's the mechanism they use to make that sound. And the brood 10 that's emerging now has three different species and if you don't pick them up and look at their belly, they look like the same. <laughs> but they can distinguish each other with their songs. They have different songs. And so females mm. go to the males and they can distinguish different male songs. And so they choose their pattern like that. And then if they like a song, they make a clicking sound, but that's with their wings, not with, not with timbals. So it's a more like discreet, soft um, sound. And so they mate. Oh, wow. That is fascinating. Uh, give me a second. Uh, for those people who just tuned in, um, I'm having a conversation with Mariana Barca. She's a, she's a PhD uh, from George Washington University. Uh, she's an environmental bio biologist, and, and, and she, she had her master's and bachelor's degree in biology in, in UNAM. So um, this is fascinating, the topic we're, we're, we're engaging on. I got to ask this question, uh, can, can we eat uh, cicadas? Can we humans eat cicadas or who eats cicadas? Okay, pretty much everyone will eat cicadas um, <laughs> because they're not toxic and there's so many. So vertebrates eat them, even pets. Uh, it's okay if your cats and dogs eat a few of them, but not too many because then they can have blockages. 
for humans, what's recommended is to get them right when they uh, finish their molt. So insects grow by shedding their exoskeleton, which is the hard part that cracks when you step on them. So um, they come out from the, from the soil, they attach to a tree or to some surface, and then they shed their, their last um, immature exoskeleton and they come out with their wings as the final adult form. And they're pretty soft when they just shed their exoskeleton. So that's when they're, they're good to pick up and freeze. And then you can boil them, roast them, cover them in chocolate. There's a recipe book uh, on how you can eat cicadas. Uh, restaurants in the DC area serve them. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> how do you try them? No, but I'm excited to try them. Well, I haven't been here. <laughs> I wasn't here the last emergence. Uh, well, I'm sure it's a, it's a big source of protein. I mean, it's like uh, it looks, it's like grasshoppers, right? Like people people in, in in the United States are always amazed that when I tell them that we eat her grasshoppers. I mean, I love grasshoppers. So kind of like uh, some people have actually said that it's kind of like the the food of the future, right? Like. It's yeah, just the, that the, that's a, just like an immense source of protein. Well, um, people don't want to realize it, but it's also a food of the present. So most processed foods like ketchup, like bread, like pasta, they have insect parts in them. And there's a regulation of how many insect parts can be in the products that we're eating. And that's just... <laughs> that's <laughs> a fact of life. Eating that, yes. Oh, Wow. Well, you're revealing a lot in this interview. I'm sure we're going to get a lot of viewers like, what? <laughs> yeah, I recommend this book. Uh, maybe you can put a, a link. Sure, we'll put a link on it. What's the name of it? Hey, Delicious. Okay. And it has recipes on um, for cicadas. And also this research from a person from uh, University of Maryland at College Park. Okay. About the amount of insect that we can, that, that's allowed to be in processed foods. <laughs> so if you think of cicadas, they're pretty, um, it's hard to get something as clean as that uh, because they feed on sap. So that's right. a very clean source of food. So yeah. yeah. Oh yes, absolutely. Well, uh, this is fascinating. I was going through, a, you have a very nice um, blog, right? I, I think I actually was checking. Uh, there, there's a lot more information there. If you want to find out, uh, be a friend of a cicada. cicada. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So what are the next uh, plans for you? What do you have going on uh, in the future? Okay. So, well, I'm waiting for the cicadas to emerge. <laughs> And I'm not doing research on the cicadas. And my PhD advisor, he is, and I just find them so fascinating. He, he started an experiment in 2004 when the last emergence happened. And now he's completing that. So it's wow. very exciting. <laughs> uh, so I'm just excited for him. And I go hover every time I can. Uh, but that's not what I, what I do. I work on, on caterpillars. And so oh, I'm wrapping up a project here at Georgetown. And then I'm going to go and start my own lab at Smith College. I'm very excited about that. And I'm going to continue studying insects. Um, I'm worried about the insect decline. So mm. um, although my focus is caterpillars, I love caterpillars. Um, I'm going to work also on pollinators and monitoring um, other other guilds of insects wow well that's great we'll probably do a program a special program on caterpillars later on uh oh, yes yes definitely definitely but this is very this is this was very good for us very insightful and i'm sure we're going to cross paths if you if you can come up with a, an idea where unam can do something with your uh wherever you're whatever field you're working on you know, that's the reason we're here in, in, in Chicago, just to, to build bridges between um, universities, too. So let us keep us posted on, on, on your research and we'll find a counterpart in Mexico. So uh, I don't know, something exciting can come up. Yeah, that would be great. I am interested in seasonality. And so seasonality here is driven by temperature and in Mexico by rainfall. So it would be great to, to look at the parallels of that. Absolutely. 
Uh, Mariana Abarca, thank you so much for, uh, for giving us your time. Uh, we wish you the best of luck in your next endeavor. And uh, I'm sure we will be talking again. Okay, thank you very much. I'm always happy to talk about insects. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And for our audience, uh, again, my name is Alberto Ponserrada. I am your host at Café Expresso. Uh, we will see you in a couple of weeks. Uh, this is a program of UNAN Chicago in alliance with Spanish Public Radio. Please stay tuned. Thank you. Thank you very much.